Hello, and welcome to QuantPi. In this video, we are going to analyze the Brownian bridge SDE, which can be viewed as an approach for interpolating a stochastic process. As in deterministic interpolation, the problem is as follows. We have been given the values of the Brownian, at the beginning and at the end, of an interval, and we have been asked to find or simulate in this case the in-between values. A typical situation where this need arises, is as follows. You have simulated the terminal value of the stock price and now you want to generate the path between its start point and the already simulated end value. The simulated, in-between values would of course, need to be consistent, with the given start and end values. Hope it is clear by now why it is called a Brownian bridge. Another popular use of the Brownian bridge is, when it is combined with quasi-random numbers to generate a simulation scheme, to great effect. And the maximum of the Brownian bridge also has close connection with, the Kolmogorov, Simonov tests. Informally, it is easy to see the connection when one recalls that the cumulative distribution, start and end values, are known. They are 0 and 1, and the maximum distance between any two distributions, can be seen as the maximum value of the Brownian bridge. As in the previous presentations, we will start with its SDE, solve it, establish its distribution, including, mean, variance, and covariance, and then show, how to simulate its paths. We then cover some concepts, that are specific to Brownian bridge. We show how to interpolate between its two end values, or construct the Brownian bridge. We will outline the differences between the general, and standard versions of the Brownian bridge. As the Brownian bridge distribution can be represented in at least three different forms, which can be confusing, so we cover these different versions, which are sometimes presented as properties of Brownian bridge, as well. Let's start with the Brownian bridge general SDE. The start and end values of the process are assumed to be known, and we represent them by A and B. Looks very similar to the ornstein ullenbeck process. You can see that the drift again forces X in the direction of B, the endpoint. Let's proceed as we did in the previous video. We expand the first term. And we then move X to the left hand side. Again, the form of the equation suggests that we should try to find an integrating factor that would make the left hand side an exact differential. We know how to find the integrating factor. We just exponentiate the integral of the coefficient of x multiplying through by the integrating factor. We see that the left hand side is now an exact differential. As can be easily verified by applying the product rule. Now integrating from 0 to t. Notice we use small t here, reason being that the capital T is already taken. Evaluating the integrals. The integral, and differential on the left hand side, cancel each other, and the integral following b, is easy to evaluate by recalling that, the derivative of 1 over u is, 1 over u squared, with a minus sign. But the minus sign is cancelled by the minus sign in front of u, a lucky coincidence perhaps. We now simplify it further. We know that the value of the process at time 0, is a, and we evaluate the limits, in the expression following b, to get. Moving it to the right hand side, and simplifying the expression following b, we get, multiplying by, capital T minus small t, to isolate x on the left, we get the solution. We can present it in two different forms. Now that we have the solution, let's verify that the values of the solution, at the left and right ends are, indeed a, and, b, we reproduce the solution here. Substituting 0 for small t, we see that most of the terms vanish, and we are left with, a, as expected. Now plugging in capital T for small t, the first and third terms vanish, and we get b. Hence, the solution does give, the required values, at the two ends. Now, you might ask how does the solution look like between these values. To see that, let's first consider the deterministic part of the solution. It is like linear interpolation, or straight line between, A, and, B. Then we can write the value at any intermediate point, say T, as A, which is like the intercept, and the slope, which is the vertical distance between, A, and B, divided by the length of the interval, times T. 
Adding the stochastic part will create fluctuations around this line. To see that, let's widen the scale, to accommodate the random fluctuations, and let's assume the interval is, from 0 to 1. The deterministic part is a straight line as we saw before, and the random part of the solution then makes it, zigzaggy. If one were to follow, this zigzaggy path to cross the bridge, what would it mean in terms of the distance, one has to walk? We will let you answer that, in the comments section. Now let's calculate the mean, variance, and covariance of the process. Let's reproduce the solution first. Taking expectation of both sides, we get. Notice we have not explicitly written this, but the expectation is conditional on the information available at the starting point. Recalling that the expected value of the integral of a deterministic function with respect to Brownian is zero, we get the mean formula. Recall from the previous videos that the variance is just an application of Ito's isometry. We have seen this integral before, so let's evaluate it quickly. Plugging in the limits, combining the two terms, and simplifying, we get the formula for the variance. Now let's calculate the covariance between the value of the process at two times, say t, and s. Recall that the covariance is the expected value of the product of the stochastic terms. Taking the known terms out of the expectation, assuming s is smaller than t, and applying Ito's isometry, we get. We have seen this integral at least twice before, so let's evaluate the integral quickly. Plugging in the limits, combining the terms, and simplifying, we get the covariance formula. If we had assumed t to be smaller than s, then the first term of the solution would have been t, instead of s. We can thus write the more general solution as follows. It is useful to visualize how the mean and variance change along the length of the bridge. Let's reproduce the mean and variance formula. We have already seen that the mean follows a straight line between the start value and the end value. Variance, on the other hand, has a very different shape. It attains the maximum in the middle. As the value at both ends are fixed, the variance vanish at both ends. Now to prepare for the simulation, we first rearrange the formula to facilitate the sequential generation of the bridge. We reproduce the mean and variance formulae. These formulae assume that the process starts with value a at time 0 and ends with value b at time capital T. For more general results, we change the start time from fixed value of 0 to a variable we call t0. The end time is already a variable, so we leave it as it is. Assume we have been asked to generate n values of the process between the fixed values at the two ends. We denote the time associated with these n values by t1, t2, and so on, until tn. Changing the start point to t0 means that we replace the t in our mean and variance formulae with t minus t0. We will also replace a and b with the proper indexed values of the process to enable further generalizations later on. Making these substitutions, our formulae become As x is normally distributed, we can write the solution in terms of a normal variable, as follows. We know from the previous videos that this representation has the same mean and variance as the solution of the process. If we further assume that the interval between the points is delta t, then the equation can be recasted to give the value of the process after an interval, delta t. This can then be used to generate the values of the process recursively, starting with the initial value. Let's generate few simulations of the Brownian bridge between 0 and 1. We could have equally generated the paths in reverse order. We are not going to repeat that, but we outline yet another scheme. Assume we have been asked to simulate Brownian bridge between x0 and x capital T. The line could have been equally downward sloping or horizontal. We can divide this interval into two halves and simulate Brownian bridge value at the middle point. All we have to do is to substitute 
t over 2, in the above equation. Simplifying, we get. Next, we can divide each of the two intervals, into two halves, and generate Brownian bridge points at the middle of these intervals. We show this for the lower interval. It is not any different from the previous point generation, only the length of the intervals have halved, and the value at the right end, has changed. Upper interval would be similar, except the start and end values would be different. We can continually refine the Brownian bridge, where refinement here would mean the paths become, more zigzaggy. We have covered the key concepts that one would need to understand, and apply the Brownian bridges. But it is a useful exercise to explore its alternative forms, as one can encounter the same Brownian bridge, in various forms. We first give the specification of the standard Brownian bridge. This is going to be very easy, as we have already explained the process in its most general form. Let's first reproduce, the general solution, and its mean, variance, and covariance. The standard Brownian bridge is pinned at zero, at both ends, so we just need to replace, A, and, B, with zero. This would make the mean zero. But the variance, and covariance will, remain the same. Hence the standard Brownian bridge, and its mean, and covariance can be written as follows. Notice, we drop the variance from the lists, as it can be easily obtained from the covariance, by replacing, S, with T. Now comes the interesting part, we can see that the Brownian bridge, is Gaussian with this mean, and covariance. But there are so many other processes involving Brownian motion, that would give rise to, a Gaussian process with this mean, and covariance. We are going to demonstrate, with a few examples. Let's start with the most popular form. Let x be, as follows. We are going to show, that this process has the same distribution, as our Brownian bridge. It is easy to see that its value is zero, at both ends. This can be easily verified by substituting zero, and capital T, for small t. Now let's calculate its mean, and covariance. Taking expectation of both sides, we see that the mean is indeed, zero. Let's calculate the covariance now. Expanding the expression, and recalling that the covariance of two Brownian is the minimum of the two time subscripts we get. Simplifying, we see that we get the covariance of our Brownian bridge. Hence the process so defined has the same distribution as our Brownian bridge and takes the required values at both ends. Now let's try another specification of x. Again, it is easy to see that its value is zero at both ends. Now let's calculate its expectation and covariance. Calculation of mean is the same as before. Let's calculate the covariance next. Taking the known terms out of the expectation and recalling that the covariance of two Brownian is the minimum of the two time subscripts we get. If we assume that s is the smallest, then the t minus s cancel, and we are left with this simple expression, which we can simplify. And if we don't want to assume s is smaller than the t, then we get this general formula as required. Hence, the process so defined has the same distribution as our Brownian bridge. This last form suggests at least two other forms. Let's copy this specification. We can take the square root of capital T inside the subscript of the Brownian. This is easy to remember by recalling that the variance of a Brownian process is the square root of the time subscript. So taking it inside means we square it. You can easily verify that it has the same start and end values as our previous specification. And you can also easily verify its mean and covariance. You can apply the logic in reverse, that is add, a capital T inside the Brownian with a matching, square root of capital T, outside in the denominator, to get yet another form. Again, it is straightforward to verify that this process has the same values, at both ends, and has the same distribution in between these values, as our previous specification. Now for completeness, we can add the trend term, 
to these alternative specifications of the standard Brownian bridge to get the alternative forms of the general Brownian bridge. It is worth highlighting that these alternative forms have the same distributions, however, they would give different path deviations of the process, as not all of them represent the so-called strong solution. Also note that the Brownian in these alternative forms are adapted to different filtrations. Essentially, the different filtrations mean that we are conditioning the calculations on information available at different times. For example, the second form assumes that we know the value of the Brownian at capital T, before time capital T. For this reason, it is called the anticipatory version. The last three forms go under the label of space-time transform. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next.